Gulliver's Travels. A doctor in England. Gulliver was on the ship as a ship's doctor. One day, when the ship was sailing to India, a big storm attacked the ship. The storm got worse overnight, and a strong gust of wind and rough waves struck the ship. Eventually, the ship cracked into two. And capsized. Gulliver was thrown into the ocean, and he desperately held on to a floating piece of timber. However, the strong wind and waves gradually took away his energy, and he finally sunk into the deep ocean. When Gulliver woke up, the sun was already high above his head. It seemed like he was carried by the waves and landed on an island. Oh, phew! I'm safe. Gulliver tried to slowly stand up. However, his body could not move at all. As he turned around his head a little bit to check out the surrounding. He was shocked, as if his heart stopped. There were many Lilliputians surrounding him. Gulliver had been tied down with a rope, and he could not move. Also, he realized there were Lilliputians pointing arrows against him. Eek! What? What are you guys doing? As soon as he screamed out, all of the Lilliputians who were pointing arrows at him released their arrows. The arrows were so tiny that it was harmless. However, there were chemicals coated around the apexes of the spear, and Gulliver, who had been shot, quickly fell asleep. It was a country of Lilliputians, called Lilliput, where Gulliver had arrived to. Lots of Lilliputian soldiers helped carry Gulliver to the castle of Lilliput. Both the king and the minister were very surprised when they saw Gulliver. Please let me get out of this rope. I am not a suspicious person," Gulliver desperately pleaded. However, it seemed like they were not understanding his language. Therefore, he decided to learn the language of Lilliputians. After studying their language for about a month, he became fluent enough to have a conversation in their language. Then he told the king. That he is not a suspicious person, the ship he had been sailing on had sunk, and he had coincidentally drifted to the island. After all, Gulliver had finally attained the approval to stay in the country from the king. As Gulliver walked through the town, many people gathered around him to see him. Wow, he is actually a giant. I wonder what he eats to get so big. After observing and walking around the country, Gulliver walked back to the castle. Dear King, if there is anything I can do, 
Please tell me. I want to be of help to you in return for saving my life. Right. Well, our country Lilliput has been having a war with a neighboring country called Blevesco. Please, I would like to borrow your strength. Yes, of course. Please leave it to me. Gulliver looked through a binocular that he had to see the country of Blefisco. That country was also a country of Lilliputians, and it was an island next to Lilliput. Then Gulliver spotted many warships stopped by the coast of Blefisco. Sir, Blefisco is preparing for a battle. It is a matter of time when a big war is going to begin. Gulliver reported to the king. Then he asked to bring him a lot of tough ropes and metal rods. He bended the end of metal rods in the shape of an anchor, then tied a rope around it. Then he carried that rope and walked through the ocean and headed towards a country of Blefisco. In Blefisco, everyone was panicking. The soldiers of Blefisco released arrows at Gulliver. However, the tiny arrows did not hurt him at all. He threw the ropes with an anchor on each end to every single warship that was stopping along the coast. Ready. Go. Gulliver pulled the ropes strongly. Then all of the warships began to move. He kept pulling them and brought them to Lilliput. The king of Lilliput was very happy. He managed to end the war without hurting anyone and obtain a lot of warships. Later, a messenger from Blefescu was dispatched to Lilliput and the two countries reconciled. Since then, Gulliver lived leisurely in Lilliput. He was a hero who had ended the war, so he was prepared with a delicious feast every day. However, since he is a giant, he ate an equivalent amount of a Lilliputian's 1,000 days' worth of food each day. Finally, the food in the country had run out. That day, the minister suggested to the king, Sir, if this continues, the food in our country is going to run out. We need to ask Gulliver to leave this country. Hmm, but he is a hero of this country. I can't just ask him to leave here. I don't know what I should do. The king was in trouble and held his head in his hands. It was after a few days when this happened. Oh no, it's fire! The castle is on fire! Gulliver, who was sleeping on a hill near the castle, jumped up to hear the noise. There was a gray smoke coming out from the castle, and intense fire dyed the sky in red. Oh my god, what is happening? I must extinguish the fire immediately. But the ocean is too far away from here, and first of all, I don't have anything to scoop the water. What should I do? Oh, I know. Gulliver thought of a great idea. He suddenly took down his pants and started peeing onto the castle. The fire died down very quickly. Thank you, Gulliver. You did it again. You are a hero. Lilliputians commended Gulliver, who saved the country twice. 
However, this action Gulliver took to extinguish the fire later developed into a serious problem. That day, the king and the minister and other peers gathered in a hall in the castle. I can't forgive him for being out of the castle, even if it was to extinguish the fire. We must kick him out from Lilliput. No, no, that's not right. We must give him a death penalty. What should we do, King? Hmm. After a while, it was concluded that Gulliver will be brought to the court. That night, when Gulliver was about to sleep, the king came along alone. Hey, Gulliver, you must flee the country. It was decided that you will be taken to the court tomorrow. In the worst case, you're going to be killed. What? Why is that? There is no time to explain. You should quickly leave this country and go to Plefescu. If you go there, they will provide you with a ship that you can fit. I understand that. Thank you so much for everything, King. I'm the one to thank you. You have saved this country twice. I feel sorry to ask you to leave this country. Take care, Gulliver. Gulliver bowed deeply to the king and started walking through the ocean to Blefescu. When he arrived to Blefescu, the queen of Blefescu greeted him at the port. Hello, Gulliver. I heard everything from the king of Lilliput. Come on, I have organized a ship for you. Over here. Hmm, this boat looks very familiar to me. Oh, this is an emergency boat that was on the ship I traveled on. It drifted to this island a while ago and we repaired it. Thank you very much. I can use it to go back to England. Bye, Gulliver. Take care. The people of Blefescu who came to the port waved at Gulliver as he sailed away. Thank you. Please take care, everyone. Gulliver's boat left the country of Blefescu. Well, Gulliver was heading to his home country, England. However, later on, he becomes lost in a mysterious land. This story continues to the next chapter. <laughs>